my confusion, 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 confusing. This is such a confused build. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This is Boost My Build, the series where we take your PC build list, we tear them up, we put them back together, and massively increase your performance. We've got two crazy builds for this episode. We have a $1,000 PC build with a monitor stuck at 1080p that wants to play Fortnite and do video editing. And we've got a Ryzen PC build built in 2018 that wants to upgrade for only $800. Can we get them to 1440p gaming right now? Or are they stuck with a new build? Remember, if you got value out of the video, please give it a like as it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key, and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. Okay, we've got Ephraim. Ephraim says, Jason, I've been following your channel since 2020. Oh my goodness, we started in 2020. You are an OG subscriber. Two thumbs up to you. They've been wanting to try and build a PC for their little sister. The game she's playing most of the time Fortnite and Minecraft and she does a little bit of video editing. Well, she doesn't sound that little then if she's doing video editing and she would do more if she had a PC. You just think she only needs 1080p and you want to have the budget stay under $1,000. Let me tell you right now, I think we're going to get to 1440p on this for $1,000 pretty easily. But let's see what you got. All right, confusion, 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 confusing. This is such a confused build. Why is it so confused? We'll talk about that in just a second because I think this, this confusion befuddles so so many PC builders. Let's talk about your budget, $920, pretty good. You finished 80 bucks under your budget. And you also threw me a little bit of a curveball. You need a monitor in here. That's nice to know. And you went with a pretty good 1080p budget monitor. That's the Pixio PX248 Prime. We go through this in our best game monitor. It's one we recommend. Two thumbs up there. But I still think we can go 1440p instead, even if you do need a monitor. Now, what's the confusion I'm talking about right now? It's a lot of PC builders don't know when to kind of flip the switch from going super budget on their components towards something more mid-range and then towards something more premium. Like when do I start upgrading my motherboard from like the complete dirt cheap POS motherboard for a $500 build to something that's more appropriate for like a thousand dollar, I guess in this case, if we're gonna spend 200 bucks on your monitor, an $800 build. Same with the CPU, same with the GPU. So we'll go through that. Let's start off with your GPU, RTX 3060. Look, fine is GPU. I like the price on this GPU now. I like it's 12 gigs of VRAM. It is the cheapest 12 gigabyte option out there. And as long as you can find this GPU for about 50 bucks cheaper than the 6700 XT and you're kind of in that $600, $700 price range, it probably makes a lot of sense. But we're not in that $600 or $700 price range. We can get a lot more performance than the 3060. I don't like the 5600X. Here's the thing where we could have gone with a cheaper CPU like the 5600, got identical performance, saved $30, thrown that towards our GPU, all of a sudden we're almost at the 6700XT, especially when we consider we're $80 under the budget. So I wouldn't have gone with the 5600X over the 5600 if there's a big price difference. Obviously, I would just pick the cheaper of the two. And the 5600 right now is selling for $140 instead. You could even go cheaper. I threw 12100F or the 5500. I don't mind going up a little bit on the CPU here, given that we can get about 10 or 15% more performance even at this GPU tier. I don't like that we haven't upgraded the motherboard yet though. So Gigabyte B450M DS3H Wi-Fi, look, 80 bucks. I'll be the first to admit, this is a fantastic budget motherboard, but we're not building an ultra budget gaming PC here. It's only got one M.2 slot. It doesn't have the best rear panel connectivity. It's pretty good. It's got Wi-Fi on it too, not terrible. It doesn't have the best VRMs on it. Not something I would want to upgrade to a 5800X3D down the track in the future, which is probably where we want to go with this build. I'll uh, leave you that option open. Very, very cut down here, cut down audio on it. There's a lot of other boards out there. We could pick up their PCI Gen 4, by the way. This is a Gen 3 motherboard, and that's another limitation. There's just a bunch of other motherboards we should consider. I like the memory, uh, G-Skill Rip Jaw, 32 gigs, DDR4, 3200, CL16 for $57. I'm not even gonna criticize that you don't need 32 gigs, because honestly, the price differential is only like 15 or 20 though 
15 or $20 does get us a little closer to that better GPU, something to consider, but 3200 CL16, absolutely fine in terms of the speed. If you make a personal preference decision that you need 32 gigs, that's fine too. It's not that much of a price difference. I will say I don't like to drive 970 EVO Plus. Basically, we're spending double the amount on our SSD. And you're like, Jason, it's only like $25. We're spending $50 on this drive. Those other drives are like 27, 28, $30. We're not spending that much more. It's only another 20 bucks. Yeah, it's 20 bucks here, 20 bucks there, 20 bucks here, 20 bucks there. And it's not really gonna give us any additional performance. 32 gigs of RAM would give us a little bit more performance depending on what we wanna do with that in the future. The load times here are gonna be so small in terms of the difference, you're not, you're never gonna notice it, so why throw the money away? Deep Cool CC 560, I like the case. Okay, uh, you just gotta make sure in PC Part Picker, this is just kind of a PSA. A lot of times you'll see prices in there, you click them through, especially any Anything that goes to the ASUS store or sometimes to B&H. You should click through and make sure that that product is actually there. In fact, this is, it's out of stock right now. It's not, not there. And Amazon's $109. We do need to get you another case. Although this one would have been a good one. Power supply, too big. Great unit. I continue to recommend it for builds that need 750 watts. This build does not need 750 watts. It's gonna be more like 600 watts, probably at the, at the max. So 100 bucks is too much to spend on this unit as good as it is. Overall, 920 bucks. But for $920, almost $1,000, we can do so much better. We're just leaving so much performance on the table. And I don't like some of the uh, components that we've kind of left behind, like the motherboard. I call this the $1,000 1440p gaming and editing with a monitor. With a monitor, because we got a monitor too. You need a monitor at 1440p in order to play 1440p. And we finished out at $985, basically $984.98. And we're going to get much higher performance, spoiler alert, because we also upgraded the GPU. You're like, Jason, how do we do this? Let's start off with the monitor. We went with the ASRock Phantom PG27Q15R2A for $199. In our best gaming monitors for 1440p, we call this the number one budget option if you're in the US. I can't find this outside of the US right now, and it's pretty much only at Newegg. But snap this monitor up. Yes, it's curved. Yes, it's VA, but it's an amazing curved VA panel. Fine for content creation as well. 165 hertz refresh rate, same color to it, and it's only $199. We're gonna power that with the Sapphire Pulse Radeon RX 6700 XT. Frankly, any 6700 XT is gonna be perfectly fine. This is the cheapest one right now. It's, once you throw the promo code on it, it's $319 right now over at Newegg. And it's got 12 gigs of VRAM, and it comes with Starfield, the premium edition, the $100 premium edition. If you at all care about a game like that, even just, hey, I'd like to try it out, why not get it for free, for free? And it's only a little bit more than that RTX 3060, and it's gonna give you way more performance. Right here, we're looking at 11 game average at 1440p. This is TechSpot's day one review of the RX 6750 XT. I think this is more in line with the kind of games she's going to play. So we look 3060 down here at 67 FPS. This 6700 XT at 92 FPS. That's like almost 40% more. FPS and perfectly fine for video editing. She is not a professional video editor doing 40 hours a week of video editing where she's gonna notice those tiny, tiny little differences between Radeon and NVIDIA GPU. So this is gonna be great for her. It's basically a 3070 with an appropriate amount of memory, which is 12 gigabytes, two thumbs up there. In order to afford that GPU and the better monitor, we're just basically gonna right size a lot of components and upscale a couple of them. So I went with the 5600 instead of the 5600X. Basically, we're gonna save about $25 and get the same level of performance. You can go with the included box cooler in it, but we opted not to. Instead, I went with the Thermorite Assassin ARGB. I went with a white RGB theme. I thought she would appreciate some cool aesthetics to this as well. I like cool, everybody likes cool aesthetics. Come on. I went with this cooler, it's $20. It's just gonna add much better kind of noise reduction in the overall system when it's under load and it's gonna just look super cool. For the motherboard, I went with the ASRock B550M Pro 4. So we got PCIe Gen 4 and we've got two M.2 slots. We've got an M.2 Wi-Fi key on here. Doesn't actually come with Wi-Fi though, I, I should say. And it comes with great rear panel connectivity, really solid VRMs on this motherboard. You could upgrade this to a 5800X 3D, no problem in the future, which is, I think is going to be your future upgrade path. I really like this board for $103 in our best motherboards for Ryzen 2023 video. This is our number one budget to mid-range option 
for Ryzen 5000 CPUs. That's why I'm going with it. We stuck it out with your RAM. I liked your RAM, 3200. I could have cut back here to save a little bit of money. If you need Wi-Fi, maybe this is one area you cut back. Maybe you cut the cooler instead. But honestly, for $56, it's hard to argue with it. For the drive, this is one area we don't need something super fast. These Spadium drives have been on super sale everywhere I look, and not just the M450, but other ones as well. You should not spend more than $30, $35 for an M.2 one terabyte drive. And this is a PCI Gen 4 drive, by the way. It's Gen 4, it does not have the DRAM on it, but super fast, $27, $28 right now. If you don't wanna wait for the rebate, you can get them for about $32, go and go to the Silicon Power A16 instead. Since your case was out of stock, I just subbed in the same exact price to Bit Phoenix Nova Mesh for ARGB fans micro ATX case, it's gonna look super cool. I went with the white one. As soon as I did, then I added the cooler and some of the other cool elements just to kind of bling up this overall build, make her just feel super awesome about it. And then for the power supply, uh, we didn't need that huge unit. Great unit, we didn't need it. We just went with our good friend, the Apiva, PR 600 watt prestige. This is a great unit, 600 watts and $52. That's its selling point, half the price. So we save 50 odd dollars right there. And people are now telling me that this unit, despite it showing in the pictures as having ketchup and mustard cables at the end, they are now coming with the black sleeves all the way to the ends of the cable. So that's great as well. So for $985, we got you an insanely performative 1440p level of performance, jumped up the bling on this build. I think she's gonna feel super proud of it. And we got you some great features on that motherboard that are gonna help in your video editing, especially the improved audio. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Arturo, Arturo says, hey Jason, this is Arthur. Okay, Arthur speaking. It's been a while watching the channel. They've always wanted to participate and boost my build. They built their PC three to four years ago and they want to upgrade it. Their budget is 600 to 800 euros and they mainly use their PC for working as an English teacher, but also with gaming with friends and some of their students. I see right there from their PC part picker list, they are in Spain. That's the ES.PC part picker list of it. So let's see what you got. Okay. Let's look at this build. Obviously, there's no total because everything's purchased already. Well, this is a boost my upgrade. Let's start off, of course, at the GPU. Where else? And your GPU is this is this is painful, man. It's a gigabyte WinForce OC GTX 1660 Ti, six gigabyte. Now, there's nothing wrong with the card. The gigabyte made a good card, but this is a six gigabyte GPU in 2023. This thing has got to go. This is 1080p levels of performance at low to medium settings in modern titles because of that six gigabytes of VRAM. If you try and play something like The Last of Us Part One or even a lot of other titles that aren't experiencing problems with eight gigabyte GPUs right now, this is gonna have an issue. So we definitely wanna replace this part. Looking at the CPU, the Ryzen 7 2700, yeah, it's certainly a CPU that you would have used back in 2018, 2019, whenever this came out, my memory serves me. This was a good contrast to the 2700X. Oftentimes it went on super sale and you could tune this up to get almost the same performance. But, and we don't even have to look at charts. I know in the past we've done this, we've looked at like charts on what I would upgrade. I don't even have to do that because anything Ryzen 2000 and older, if we're gonna upgrade the GPU to something faster than a 1660, we also want to go ahead and drop in a brand new CPU, which we can actually do. Your motherboard, now Gigabyte B450 Airs Pro, this was not the best B450 out there. This was their flagship though. And look at this, look at the upgraded audio on this board. This board costs $129 and it was their flagship B450 board. Look at the boards and the cost today. It just blows my mind. Look at all the features you used to get on these boards. Nice RGB on it. The problem with this was the VRM, uh, both the configuration, but also they put this giant block of plastic over the top of the heatsink. You can't get airflow over it. But for the with CPU that we're gonna go to, it really won't make a difference. So this board is still great. Look at that, two M.2 heat shields on it. It's a great board for $120. Where are these motherboards today? Uh, I like your RAM, G-Skill Ripjaw, 16 gigabyte DDR4, 3600 CL16. This is what I would recommend upgrading to even if we had slower memory. So we've already got it, nothing really more here to do. And then your storage situation definitely needs help. You did one of those small SSD and big hard drive deals, which were still common four years ago. I'm not gonna knock you for it, but they were kind of going out of style. And in 2023, they're completely gone because NVMe 
SSD storage is so cheap right now. It looks like you've got probably at least one open M.2 slot on it. We definitely want to upgrade. This is only 250 gigabytes. And then you've got a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive. Yikes. Let's see if you can get rid of these things. Uh, the case, I actually do not like your case. I don't like it really at all. I, I look at this thing, unless there's something I'm missing here, there is no airflow on this case. It's just a solid block of plastic. That is an absolute no-go. I mean, I just don't see anything other than a couple of exhausts. I guess there is an air gap here where air can flow in. I don't love the airflow in your case. I want to change your case out. If you're like, Jason, my temps are fine, you can keep it, but we are going to change this case. And then we go over to your Knox Power Supply, NOX. I had never heard of this brand. Obviously, they don't sell in the US. I looked them up on the PSU Coltis list. Every single Knox unit is listed under the F tier, which says replace immediately. Yikes. We are going to replace this thing. This is not a good power supply. You have 750 watts with massive overkill at the time. Probably should have invested a little bit more in getting a better quality unit with less overall power to it but we're not gonna reuse this unit. We definitely need to get rid of it. You do have a 1080p monitor. I don't think for the budget we're going at right now, I can do a lot for you on this. I think we're gonna basically be able to upgrade the tower. And then I would say save up some money over time because I do wanna target 1440p. But listen, the LG 27 GQ 50F, I looked it up because I couldn't remember. It's a pretty good 1080p monitor. So overall, this build is definitely way past its prime. There are some salvageable elements in it in terms of the motherboard, in terms of the RAM. We can hold onto the storage and add more, but the other elements definitely need super upgrades right now and we can get you a better experience. I call this a system reborn 1440p high FPS gaming because you're gonna get amazing gaming at 1440p. You will have to save up for a monitor. I, I, I stuck with your monitor in order to get you this level of performance, but let's go through it. Starting off with the budget, I finished out at 769 euros, 769 euros. And the great thing about it is in Spain, the Probably the taxes are countrywide, they're not state by state. So what you're looking at there also includes tax. So that's your out the door price for everything. Let's jump through. Let's start off with the GPU because this is the part I struggled. I really struggled. The problem here is I really wanted to get you a 1600 XT, but in order to do so, I would have then had to upgrade the PSU and you would basically put you in another price category for PSUs and it would have been more on this and you ended up 40 or 50 euros over budget every single time. But I was able to get to an RX 6800, still gonna be amazing gaming performance, which we'll go through in just a second, for $464, XFX Swift version. This is on Amazon Spain. But I will say there is a limited amount of 6800s out there anymore, in Spain at least. So if you can't find one and you can't jump up to the 6800 XT and increase your PSU, then I would go 6750 XT instead here. But let's take a look at the relative performance here with the RX 6800. You can see it's about 20% faster than even the 6750 XT and about 25 or more faster percent faster than the 6700 XT. It's got 16 gigs of VRAM. It is a very, very fast card. Is it 4K capable? Sure, 60 FPS and a lot of titles at high settings but I will say it's much more appropriate for high FPS 1440p gameplay. That's what we're gonna target. It says you still gotta buy the monitor. 1440p monitors are cheaper. Now your CPU, the 2700, that is completely gonna be bottlenecked at this point. It's gonna hit a hard wall. We wanna go up CPUs here. And unfortunately, I we couldn't quite get to the 5800X3D. I did kinda of wanna get there, but it's like another 170 euros. It's more than twice the price of the 5600. And I just don't think it's worth it for you because you'd have to go massively over your budget. So I got you the Ryzen 5600. So you will not get the absolute maximum out of that GPU, but pretty close, pretty close. And this is only gonna set you back 135, 135 euros. It's cheaper than it is in the US because this includes tax where the US prices do not include tax. That's crazy. That is totally crazy. This is a great CPU. You can just go ahead and use the 2700 cooler. Instead, it came with the Ray Spire, which is a thicker heatsink than the one this comes with, or you can 
can of course go spend about 20 euros on an aftermarket heatsink instead. But for 135, that is an insane deal. Let's fix your crazy store, small SSD, big hard drive situation. You can keep those, just keep them the way they are. And what I want you to do is you're gonna install this drive and you're gonna use this as your main boot drive. Remember the B450 motherboards, they're only PCI Gen 3, so there's no reason to spend any more money on a PCI Gen 4 drive. Uh, they will work, they're backwards compatible, but they won't be the full PCIe 4 speed. They'll just be limited to PCI Gen 3. So I went with the Crucial P3, 42 euros for one terabyte. Not quite as good as the US, but still pretty good. And it's gonna give you a lot more space. I would use this for your boot drive. For the case, I went with the Deepcool CC560 ARGB for 59 euros, 59 euros, insane prices. You got some really good, and this is with tax included over there. You got some really good prices in Spain. I hear complaints about European prices all the time. I'm not seeing it, guys. I am not seeing it. I'm seeing some really good prices. Four included ARGB fans, three in the front, one in the rear, and they're AR RGB on this one. They're not the LED fans, which is super nice. And it's a great case. This is the one you're gonna to wanna to transfer over to. If you do wanna keep your old case, you're like I'm convinced the temps are gonna be fine, that's okay. Otherwise, I would definitely go with this. And then finally, power supply, we went with the MSI Mag A650BN. I believe these are B tier rated on the PSU cultist list. They haven't really filtered into the US market just yet. This is kind of like the next generation of MSI uh, PSUs. 650 watts is all you need, all you need. 650 watts for this build. So that's what I grabbed you just to keep the cost a little bit lower. And again, 60 euros and that includes the VAT tax. I mean, that's insane. Your situation over there is not as bad as people would have me believe. So for 769 euros, we massively upgraded your GPU. You're gonna be able to play up to 4K if you want, but really high FPS 1440p titles. We massively upgraded your CPU to a Ryzen 5600, which you should be able to take out and drop an upgrade after updating the BIOS on that board, of course. And then we massively upgraded your storage situation, your case and your PSU as well. All of that for 769 euros. So I hope you feel like your upgrade is boosted. Remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, did you see our best mini ITX build guide? Check it out right here. We go through everything that you need to know to make the best mini ITX guide. He's out of here and we'll catch you on the next one.